Hello. What I'd like to show you today is um, how to do a radiation light field coincidence measurement. So if I uh, go under the beam measurements uh, pull down menu, we can see that we have light field coincidence here and that's the routine that we're going to go ahead and use. First I'm going to go ahead and open up an image for that. So there are a couple different ways of, of uh, exposing this and uh, getting the images that we need. Let's start with a, um, a radiation light field that was done on a piece of film and, um, and it doesn't really matter if this was done on film or an EPID. The software can handle either of those cases and we'll do an EPID case next so that everybody can see that. Uh, this is a radiation light field that was done with an isoalign phantom. Uh, you don't really need uh, the isoalign phantom to do this. Um, but let's go in and take a look and we'll open up the light field coincidence routine and then I can um, explain some of these things um, as I go along. The one mark that the software does need in all of this is a center uh, a center object. So if you had a piece of film, you might be putting a pinprick uh, at the center, uh, at isocenter here. If you had an EPID, um, you could put a BB right there at isocenter. And as a matter of fact, um, we have uh, a little phantom that we call the LRAD, and um, this is a piece of solid water, and if you're using an EPID, this is pretty much the perfect tool for you. It has a BB embedded at the exact center with laser markings uh, on the four sides, and then it has the light field um, scribed there for 5, 10, 15, and 20 centimeter light fields. So you can go ahead and put this on your EPID, uh, set your light field up to make sure that it hits within the scribed areas, and then um, and then go ahead and just expose the field, and, we, and the software will take that in and work with that. Again, that's called the LRAD Phantom, and it's, it's fairly inexpensive. Um, so... If we go back to the light field routine, um, as I said, this was the uh, called the LRAD or the, uh, it either works with our LRAD Phantom or it works with something called the Isoalign Phantom. Uh, IBC used to make a Phantom for this. We can do asymmetrical uh, fields, which we'll do next, or there are some custom uh, Phantoms that people have for that. But let's stay with the first one, either our LRAD or the Isoalign. Uh, this happens to be an ISO line. You can see that there are some other BBs on here for other things. Um, and like I said, we don't need those in the image. All we need is this center. So the first thing we're going to do is take this little region of interest. And it actually may be easier if I go to palette one here and now I have a gray um, box or a gray image. And uh, I can move this red box around in there. And now um, I want to place that center object, whether it's a pinprick or a BB, inside this region of interest. Okay, This is going to be the isocenter, the center of the light field, and the center of the radiation field. The software only uses this as the center of the light field. So what it's going to do here is it's going to look at our selection, and in this case, I'm going to tell it that this is a 15 by 15 centimeter field. And uh, this looks like it was set up for a variance system, but you can modify this for some of the other vendors' fields if the, uh, the edges are not equidistant on those. So on some of them, you might have 7.4 here and 7.6 there. Um, so this is basically saying that we're going to take a 15 by 15 centimeter field. The top's going to be seven and a half away. The bottom and left and right sides are also going to be seven and a half away. So what this is telling the software is the field size for the light field is going to go from this center 
and in this case it's going to go seven and a half centimeters to the right seven and a half to the left and so on okay that's how we're going to know where the light field is you would um either put this on the scribe lines for our LRAD phantom or to some of the marks that might exist on some of the other phantoms like this isoline phantom. If you were doing this on your EPID, you may not be at exactly 100 SID, so you could adjust this here and then the software will scale that to the SID that you're using. And so now that we have that um, have that center marked um, all we have to do is click analyze image and the software is going to go in and it's going to put a mark here where this where it's found the centroid of this so even if this box even if this region of interest is not centered in the field it will find the mark within there provided that there is only one mark in that area if there are multiple marks that might confuse the software then since we've picked LRAD isoaline, it's taking some profiles top, um, top and bottom, left and right, as, um, as described in the um, report. And right now, I don't exactly recall. I think it was TG49 that describes this, but I could be wrong. Uh, one of the task group reports um, talked about how you were supposed to take a radiation light field measurement and we followed that fairly exactly and made some minor modifications for what they want in the TG142 report and um, basically it's taking lines here to avoid some of these other marks on the LRAD. We don't have those marks in the um, uh, I'm sorry, the marks on the ISO line. We don't have those marks in the LRAD, so there's nothing to avoid. Um, but now that we've done this, it's gone in and it gives us some uh, basic information, what field size we've selected, um, if there is information on the, um, the facility and that uh, stored with the image, it will put that up. Um, it will now go in and measure the top side misalignment for the left and right side, the bottom side misalignment, the left side and the right side misalignment. And then, um, then it's going to look at the full width half max um, on the um, on the radiation field. So it, it from using the center mark here and the information that we've given it up here, the software determines where the light field is. It uses the full width and half max measurement to determine where the radiation field is. So in this case, on the top to bottom measurements, it's um, finding that the full width half max is 15 point, almost 0.23 centimeters, and it's measuring the penumbra for us and the flatness and the symmetry. Uh, we can change, we'll see later how we can change some of these. Well, I guess we could do that now. We could go to set specifications and we can select the criteria for flatness. We might use the Varian method, TG45. So it was TG45 that, um, that this was all defined in. Um, uh, CMS had an old Dynascan methodology. Loma Linda has some methodologies that they use for protons, and then the uh, French have their own method for measuring flatness and symmetry, and uh, you can select from any one of those. If none of these meet your needs, um, it's not possible, because this is an FDA, ISO, and CE-regulated device, it's not possible for the users to put their own calculations in here. But if you would contact our IT technical support and provide us with the equation that you would like, we will try to get that in a subsequent release of the software. So we can add things in here after we've tested them, but we can't, um, we can't let you add your own in there. Um, we can decide here how we're going to calculate the full width half max. Are we going to normalize to the center or to the maximum value? We can set the penumbra specs. And then if I would click Apply Settings, these would then uh, change the calculations here if we were uh, going to change something. 
Um, so now we can, uh, the first thing we looked at up here was the uh, top to bottom uh, specifications. Now we can look at the left to right specifications. Then we're going to measure the field edge orthogonality for the top left and the bottom right. And then we can look at the difference between the radiation field and the light field. And as it says in here, negative deltas indicate the radiation field was outside or was inside the light field and positive would be outside the light field. So at the top left, this is, ex this is um, the width we're measuring on the radiation field and the delta is 1.3 millimeters. This is the bottom left, so the left side is off by this total amount. Okay. Similarly, we're going to do, uh, we're going to compare the top right to the bottom right for the right side distance, the right top to the left top for the top distance, and then the uh, right bottom and left bottom for the bottom distance. Then we're going to look at a root sum square of all those and come up with the overall radiation light field misalignment. So that completes everything we need to do for the TG45 tests. Now, we, there are a few other buttons here. Um, we can look at the image with the fields um, or not. Uh, we can just look at, at the report here. Um, we can turn the report um, on or off if we wanted to get a clear look at just the analysis image. and. Um, and if we don't want the measurement positions on there, we can remove those. So uh, in this case, um, we can, if we wanted to uh, get a report for all of this, we could go up here and click on Export ASCII Data, and then it would export all of this in an ASCII format um, that, uh, that we could uh, save in a report format if we wanted to. We can also go over here and click on this icon and export it to the RIT Trend database. Uh, that's uh, a trending and tracking database. All the measurements would go in there. We could track any individual measurement over time. We can set um, a warnings and alerts for all of those. It can send a text to your phone or send an email to someone if this is measured and it becomes out of spec. Um, so this is, a, um, uh, this is a very, very nice tool that's based on statistical process control. And a different video will go into the, um, the RIT trend analysis routine all by itself. OK, now that we've done a standard radiation light field, I wanted to show you one of the new features uh, that will allow us to do asymmetrical radiation light field. Okay, so now we've seen the, the basic um, radiation light field setup. As I mentioned, um, you can use this for uh, a different kind of phantom, asymmetrical fields, which we're going to cover next. I just want to cover the custom phantoms because here we have 5, 10, 15, 20, all the standard um, radiation light field sizes. But if your facility uses a different size, you can go to custom and then you can just specify the square field size. So maybe you had a facility that used 8 cm for that. Um, then you could have an 8cm by 8cm uh, custom radiation light field size. So that's another option in all of this. Um, in, uh, in all of this. Um, so let's go ahead and let's try to do um, uh, an asymmetrical measurement. Uh, so this, of course, um, uh, I guess it could be done with film. It's more commonly done with an EPID. So if I go in and I, um, I open a reference image, in this case, I'm going to open um, an asymmetrical image that we have from one of our uh, Electa customers. And um, uh, this, this image has a number of uh, 
a number of small features on it. I might be able to pull some of those out so we can kind of see that there's a BB up here, which we're not interested in at all. This is the BB at the center of, at ISO Center. So this is a 15 by 20 centimeter asymmetrical field. We still need the BB at the ISO Center for this to work. It can't be so asymmetrical that you are, um, uh, that you're not including ISO Center in this, uh, but TG1, uh, TG142 doesn't specify the type of asymmetry. It just says that you have to test an asymmetrical field. So what we'll do now is go up here to beam measurements and light field coincidence. And in this case, I'm going to go in and say I want to do an asymmetrical field. So you'll notice that we don't have the field size overall in here anymore. We still have the little box. I'm going to take the region of interest and I'm going to put that so it includes this, um, this little um, BB that's on there. Uh, this is, as a matter of fact, taken on our LRAD Phantom. This is the uh, BB that's up in the corner here so we could see here on 15 by 15. Um, there's a BB on this corner. And on the 20 by 20, it's a different corner. Uh, actually, on the 20 by 20, it's all the corners. Um, but um, the, the other BB that you're seeing is this corner of the Phantom. And we don't need that for this analysis, but it's interesting to me at least. Um, and now I'll say, OK, uh, from the center to the left, I have 5 centimeters. I have 10 centimeters to the right. And then the top and the bottom also have 10 centimeters. And um, so now um, I, I'm doing this at an SID of 100. And um, uh, and I have a 15 by 20 field. I, I labeled the film that way so I would remember it for my demos here. And now if I click on Analyze Image, it goes in and automatically analyzes this. Now, again, we we don't have many objects that we have to worry about as far as missing them like we had in that ISOALIGN Phantom, all those other BBs meant for manual analysis by eye. But what we're doing here is we're taking the um, sample lines halfway between the centroid, the ISO center, and whatever the edge is specified. So um, this edge was specified at 5 cm, so 2.5 cm in, we're taking the left measurement. Uh, 10 cm in, we're taking the right. Same thing with the top and the bottom. So the asymmetrical part of this can really be any size. We can go in and, and make any adjustments to it up here, and it's going to move these sample lines to halfway between isocenter and that edge to go ahead and give us that sample. So we can see here that um, we're getting really nice tight alignments on these. Um, and um, uh, by the way, the, um, the old TG45 measurement um, said that you had to give the distance in millimeters and the TG142 measurement calls for this in percent. So we're giving them both here so you have all the measurements that you need for this test. Thank you very much.